Welcome back. I have here a British Thornton AA-010 comprehensive slide roll. Um, this slide roll is also called the PIC or PIC P221. I think British Thornton bought them at some point. Um, this is an interesting slide roll. Uh, it's a log log slide roll, six log log scales. It's got folded scales, um, although it's missing CIF. It's got your standard complement of trigonometric scales on the back, except interestingly it has the second Pythagorean scale uh, for square root 1 plus t square. We just saw this scale appearing on the uh, Flying Fish 1003, a little bit of a rare Pythagorean scale, but otherwise pretty standard uh, scale layout here, including the DI. The strange thing is instead of CIF, they put on their patented differential trig scales, which are kind of an alternative uh, way to do trigonometry. They have some slide rolls which only have these trig scales. And these are kind of strange scales. There's actually four scales. Uh, there's a scale called TD, the scale called SD, uh, ISD, and ITD, and they all fit kind of in one line uh, in the place of the one CIF scale. So they're very compact. Um, and if you're used to the regular trigonometric scales, which are on this slide roll, uh, just in case that's what you're used to, uh, then these are kind of strange scales. They're weird. The way you use them is weird. Uh, but I'm going to try to explain to you, well, one, how to use them, uh, but also kind of the inner logic of them. Um, so first let's talk about what they actually are. Uh, so the, the SD is the sine differential scale, or differential sine scale. Um, so these are in general called the differential trigonometric scales. Uh, so you have that, you have the, the differential tangent scale, and you have their inverses. Uh, so the SD scale, uh, what it computes with respect to the C or D scale is the angle theta divided by the sine of theta. Okay, uh, TD, the angle theta divided by tangent of theta. And for the inverse functions, uh, let's call R for ratio. It's the ratio divided by arcsine R and ratio divided by arctan R. So let me show you how you would use these. Well, let's do something that we know. Sine of 30 degrees should be 1 half. Okay, so we want to compute sine of 30 degrees. So looking at this, solve this for sine theta. Um, it should be theta divided by differential sine of theta. Okay, so I'm going to find 30. I'm actually going to find that on the D scale. Then using the differential sine scale, which is this one all the way on the right, I'm going to find the angle 30, like I'm doing division. Then out at the index, uh, here I read the 0.5, which is the correct sine. Okay, um, let's do a tangent. For tangent of 30 degrees, um, I would still, first I would find the 30 on the, the D scale. Um, so tangent of 30 should be 30 divided by uh, the differential trig um, of 30. Uh, so you see that the tangent scale reads backwards, so it's in red on this slide roll. Okay, so I have 30 divided by um, TD of 30. Okay, it looks like 5, 7, uh, looks like 5, 7, 8 or so. Uh, that's 1 over square root 3, right? Um, okay, correct. Uh, to do an arc sine, you, you do the same thing, except you use uh, ISD. So let's do arc sine 0 0.5, that should be 30. Uh, so let's set 0 0.5 as 5 here. Then I'll find, so here I need to find 0 0.5 again on ISD. So it's like you need to set set something twice often with these scales. So you're set, setting the 0 0.5 twice. Okay, then coming out to the index, I see 3, which I should interpret as 30 uh, for the arc sine 0 0.5. So arctan would work in the same way. In fact, I'll do an example in a second. Um, okay, let's see a couple of computations of the type you would need to uh, solve triangles. So 35 times sine 62 degrees and arctan 37 over 115. So let's do this first one first. So for, first I'll compute sine 62 degrees. So we know to do that now I need to find 62 and divide by uh, the differential trig sine of 62. So I've got 62 here and 62 here on SD. Then uh, if I divide, I would be out at the index. So let's do a chain operation. So the, the sine would be here, about 0.8 something, but then to multiply by 35, I'm going to find 35 on C and read result without resetting the slide. Uh, looks like 30 uh, point four, uh, let's see, yeah, 30.9, 30.9.
Okay. Uh, to do this arctan, this is a little harder. So first I've got to find this quotient. So let's find 37 on D. We'll divide in the normal way. Uh, so let's find 115 on C. Okay. Then out here at the index, um, I have that quotient. That's the R. Okay, and what I want to do is R divided by arctan, arctan R. Or sorry, I want to do R divided by ITD R. So I need to read what R is. So it looks like 3, 3, 2, 2. And I know that's 0 0.322. Okay, so I'm going to use ITD here. Here's 0 0.3, uh, 2, and a tiny hair, 0 0.322. Okay, so then that quotient is over here. Looks like 17, uh, 17.8, 17.8 degrees. Okay, um, so those could be useful calculations for solving triangles. Um, but before I go on to kind of the useful setting here, I want to talk about the logic of the scales. So you might say, well, right now these scales look like just a... Um, a trick, right? Somebody realized that uh, if you you have these functions, then you can get all the trick scales in one line, and they're going to use that to save space on the slide roll. Um, that is true, uh, but there is kind of an inner logic here. So we know for an angle which is small, say close to zero, um, the type of angle you would usually use the ST scale for, so let's say like below six degrees or five degrees. Uh, you can compute the sine fairly accurately by dividing by, or let's say multiplying, or, well, okay, you want to convert to radians, so you want to multiply by um, pi over 180 degrees, right, to convert to radians, uh, or you want to divide by 180 degrees over pi. Uh, this mark, this is about 57.3, uh, this mark is marked on a lot of slide rolls, um, on picket slide rules, it's marked as an R uh, for radian. Uh, so to do radian conversion, you divide by this. On this slide roll, this is a Rico slide roll. Um, it's marked as rho degrees. I guess that's because uh, one radian um, in terms of degrees is 57.3 degrees. Um, so to convert to radians, uh, you divide using that mark. Okay. Um, so, ah, here's the idea. But the zero of both the differential tangent scale and the sine differential scale um, is at that number, about 57.3 on the C scale. Okay? Uh, they have it marked as U here. Uh, the inverse scale is at the reciprocal. That number is also marked on some slide rules. Okay. Uh, why is that? Well, again, if you, have, if you want to compute a tangent or a sine close to zero, you're going to end up dividing by that number based on the setting we just did. Ah, that's the same as converting to radians, right? So that's going to compute the sine or the tangent of that number when you're close to zero. And you can see the numbers really bunch up here close to zero. So when you're anywhere close to zero, you're basically, basically going to be doing that division. The idea, though, is as the angle grows, if you were to try to convert the sine or the tangent in the same way, it's going to have an error. To correct for that error, you could move that mark. You could move that mark a little bit. Uh, to correct for the error. And that's what they've done here. So the sine differential scale, one way to think of it is, is like that R mark, it keeps moving out by the correct correction for larger angles um, until you get to 90 degrees. Uh, the tangent actually goes out to 60 degrees, so you get a little bit more range than the regular tangent scale, which only goes out to 45 degrees. Okay? But the idea is that, that if you're going to move the mark to make the correction, then for sines it moves this direction, and for tangents it moves that direction as the angle increases, and that's how you create these scales. Okay, now, it would still be a little bit of a pain to use um, if there wasn't kind of a replacement for uh, the way you use the S scale with the law of sines. It's just such a useful setting for solving triangles with the S scale. Uh, so there is a replacement for that, and it's based on this identity. If you have an, a triangle here, and uh, alpha is across from A. Um, this identity is true even when um, alpha is not the smallest angle, but because the tangent scale has the 60 degree um, limit, let's imagine we have a right triangle here and this alpha is the smallest angle um, and A is the side across from it. 
B is the other leg of the right triangle, and C is the hypotenuse. So imagine alpha the smallest. Okay, this is a pretty easy identity to work out. You can try it at home. Uh, the angle alpha divided by side length A is equal to TD of alpha divided by B, or SD of alpha divided by C. Now, seems strange, and uh, I will admit that the kind of strangeness of this um, is what makes the regular trig scales uh, a little bit more enticing sometimes. The kind of equivalent setting with the regular trig scales is just the law of signs. Um, but this is the best that we can do. Let's think of it this way. If you have a right triangle um, and you arrange the side lengths in increasing order, so A is the smallest, B is the other leg, and C is the hypotenuse, um, then this setting has those uh, side lengths in that order on the D scale. So A, uh, the smallest on the D scale, B in the middle, and C, the largest. Then there is a corresponding setting on the slide uh, for where you can put um, that small angle alpha. So on the small end, alpha is just found on the C scale. Um, over the, the middle side length, alpha should be found on the TD scale, and over the uh, hypotenuse length, alpha is found on the, the SD scale. Uh, this alpha is always that smallest angle alpha. Okay, so smallest angle alpha somewhere on the slide over the three lengths of the triangle in increasing order here. Okay, so let's solve a couple triangles using this property. Uh, I guess we'll solve three triangles. <laughs> okay. Um, so, if we look at this triangle, see, I have this 25 degree angle here. I know that's the smallest. Okay, so this is alpha 25. Uh, here I have the hypotenuse, so I'm going to use setting 3. So, uh, C, the 85, I'm going to find on the D scale to do setting 3. And then alpha, the small angle, I'm going to set on SD. Notice you could remember it like this, right? Uh, the SD scale is to the right of the TD scale. Okay, so you remember, uh, smallest, uh, medium, largest, right? Uh, like that. Okay, so I've made that last setting, which now has got the slide set for this proportion. Okay, so on TD alpha, I could find B, this length. So let's go to angle 25 on TD. Okay. Then on D, I see 77. It looks like 0. .0. Okay, then the smallest side length I can find by putting that angle 25 simply on the C scale. Okay. Then on D scale, um, I read the side length. looks like 35.9. Great, let's do another. Uh, for this triangle, I see, look, okay, I don't know the smallest, that's supposed to say 66 degrees. Uh, so the first thing I'll do here is compute that smallest angle, which is going to be 24 degrees. Uh, then I see I have the smallest angle and I have the medium side length, uh, so I'm going to use setting 2, where I use the smallest angle on TD and medium side length on D. So let's set that 38 on D. Then I'm going to align TD of 24. There. Now I could find you the smaller side or the larger side. Let's do both. Uh, so to find the hypotenuse, I'm going to come out to 24 on SD. There. Read result on D. Looks like 41.6. Okay, and then the smallest side I'm going to get by putting that 24 on C and looking at D. So there's 24 on C. D's reading looks like 16.9, uh, a little bit more. Great. Okay, let's look at the third setting. So for this last triangle, um, what I know is, okay, the smallest angle, 40 degrees, and the side across from it, that's setting number one. Okay, so let's find the 1.6 on D first. Then I'll bring the 40 on C over that. Okay, then I can find the two larger lengths by uh, using TD and SD. Uh, so let's do them in order. So let's find the medium length, the other leg, by finding the 40 on TD. I found the 40 on TD, 
and I see about 19, let's just read that as 19.1, uh, so I know that'll be 1.91, and I'll find the largest one by using 40 on SD. Okay, that looks like 24.9. Okay, so this is how you solve triangles with the patented differential trig scales. Um, I like to think of them as kind of an R gauge mark which moves off as a correction um, for larger angles. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope now you see kind of the inner logic of these scales and uh, how kind of unique and cool they are. Um, post a comment below.